Oh, Flappy Bird. Oh, <gasps> there's Flappy Bird. I'm ready to play it. Put me in, coach. Oh. Oh, game over. Shoot. This was sent out to me by QK. Ooh. We have the ice blue unit. This is one of nine colorways. This one is the anodized ice blue. Nine colors. So for spray coated, you have bubble tea, retro white, red, white, pink, butter yellow. And then for anodized, you have silver gray and ice blue. Hello. Haroj. <laughs> What's the point of not using a camera when the keyboard's just going to expose your face like that? What the heck? So rude. Oh my god, you can see my face here too. Okay, we need to remove this. This needs to go. Okay, so here we go. Here we are. Check this out. Whoa, upcoming board. So lots of things going on. First of all, yes, it's a TKL. It's a F12 TKL from what it seems like. However, they've done this thing where if you look at this, they have now replaced the three keys that you would normally have down here with a module and it looks like a light badge. You still have the separate arrow keys. So now you have this LCD. They're saying this is a dot matrix LED panel customizable features. If you look at this nav cluster, there's actually an accent piece around the whole thing. So you don't have it around like the F rows right here, but you do have it on this nav cluster. It kind of blends in with the ice blue because it's silvery, but yeah. Looking at the top pieces, F row is separated, F12 TKL. The bezels all look somewhat even. There are no sharp edges from the top. So you can see like this corner is curved. Boop, boop. Oop, oop. So curvy corners. If you look here, there's actually two buttons you can press. Here's a side, top piece, mid piece, and bottom piece. So there's three things you can see here, right? This part is the accent, and then this part actually matches the top piece. If you look right here, it does have this crease right here. And then here is the back. Whoa. This is a fingerprint magnet and I'm probably gonna scratch it. So there's a lot going on on the back as well. First of all, this back is similar to what we saw with the Vento. You have this part, which kind of gives the board the typing angle. So this is a separate color. This is actually the same color as this front piece. So this is your accent weight, but on top of this accent, you have this one. This is like what gives the board the angle, but on top of that, you have this weight right here. It looks like this is all one piece though. So you have this accent, the QK accent right there. So this is the board's name, MK2. And then you have this big mirror piece right here and then a little accent right here. So if you guys remember the Vento, very similar design. Four keys of feet. The two bottom feet are gonna be slightly longer. There might be some kind of LED module right here too. This I'm guessing is for a badge and for a dongle. So you do have the option of hiding the dongle within the board, which is really nice. There is this little chasm right here, right? Chasm, however you say it. If you look at this, it says working gaming fun so not only do you see the branding on the back right but pretty interesting back weight and then the badge being on the side also very interesting with qk boards a lot of times we've seen the badge like in the middle but this time they've opted to put it on the side still has that hidden component though which is neat usb port so here you can see the two-toned right centered usb port you can see the top piece and then this would be the bottom piece and then if you look here you can see that this part where the nav cluster is actually does stick out a little bit and then here is the front lip or you can only see the top piece so yeah i'd say in terms of design top piece very unique you now have a screen and this nav cluster and then on the back you have this very unique weight as well as like the two-toned bottom piece in terms of how this opens it uses ball catch Apparently this is new, but it has a leaf spring mounting system. So this is what you see like right here. So looking at the top case, right? So here you can see the entire module right here. So what they're saying on this is that you can actually play games on this screen. They've added 
their version of a flappy bird. And then these, the screen is actually customizable. So this entire module is one piece. It has a bunch of screws. I don't know if you guys can see this, but eight, right? Just for that piece alone. I'm guessing these three tiny screws and these two. So the total of five is for this accent piece right here to keep it in place. Pogo pin. So you do see the ribbon cables right here, but you don't ever have to interact with it unless something goes wrong. So that's nice, but still does use the Pogo connector. You can see the ball catch mechanisms. You have the two on the top and the two on the bottom. And then it looks like you can see the mounting points. So for the leaf spring, so you can kind of see where they are, like little pads right here. And then here's the bottom piece. You do have this internal weight right here that matches the accent piece of this back weight and also of this screen. You have these leaf springs that have already been installed for me, thankfully. You have three on the top and then three on the bottom, so a total of six. And it's interesting because, check this out, there is like a clear thing that they've used to screw onto it. And it uses two. Instead of using one, they've used two screws. Both are used to screw this piece down, but also to help screw this clear little plastic piece down as well. And then they have these little silicon bumpers right here. This is adhesive, but I'm guessing this is for the all cap so their idea of like a force break so you have one two three four and then you have these side silicone pieces that have also been screwed down so one two three four and this is to prevent the top piece from like shaking so not only have they implemented the metal to metal contact with the ball catch but also the shifting of the ball catch as well so you have two things implemented and then here we have this internal weight that I could take apart but looking at it we have seven on the blue part and then two on the silver part the screws are different sizes so this is the left and this is the right <laughs> Woo! so this is deconstructive but top piece mid slash bottom piece bottom piece right so it looks like for this piece you have seven screws keeping this bottom piece on the bottom piece that we we're talking about that looks similar to the vento it acts as two pieces right so not only is it like the accent weight, but it's also the battery cover. So you have four screws keeping the bottom weight on, but as you can see, that's where the battery compartments are. So here you have the connector for the PCB, and then you have a separate connector for the USB, and then you have this part for, I guess there is an LED module underneath. So it has two LEDs right there. So there is a big long ribbon cable right here, but you actually don't need to interact with any of these ever. <laughs> so I recommend not interacting with it. This piece, there's nothing holding it down other than like this screen or this cutout right here that will hold it sort of in place. But as you can see, there's nothing really holding it down. That's why I'd recommend not taking it apart because you'd have to make sure to align that. You can see there's two LEDs right there. So that's what this piece is. So whenever you're reassembling, you just gotta make sure that you align this one. It's magnetic, so it'll be pulled up or it'll connect to the PCB. So you don't have to worry about it like not being like completely straight, but you just wanna make sure it's in the hole like this because it could go underneath like that and that's not correct. Holy moly. We got a skeleton plate looking here. Okay, so what I said earlier about looks like you could potentially change out the screen, you cannot. So these three keys, gone. They're just gone so okay? And that's reflected by the plate, right? Because you don't see the three keys right here. Lots of flex cuts, so I'd say it's almost like a skeleton looking like plate. You do have the on and off switch cut out right here. You do have flex cuts, mostly along the alphas. You do have it separating like the F rows, right? You do have this large cut right here, right above the arrow keys. Here you can also see the mounting points. So you got one, two, three, four, five, six. Okay, so it looks like the carbon fiber does not have the cuts. So that's something to be aware of whenever you are picking out your plates, of which ones have the cuts and which ones don't, right? No cuts anywhere except for this part right here. You still do have this cutout right here, and then you have this cutout for the screen. Okay, so we have case foam, anti-static film right here. Is this for the back, like this? This one is for the back of the PCB, and then you have this one, which is the plate foam. Plate foam, they've opted to just cut off the entire spacebar area 
and then they've combined the two big hole cutouts right there. Here you have the PE foam, and then here is the PCB. So no flex cuts on the PCB. This is for the screen module, so you can see it's been cut out. So it does use a ribbon cable. So there's like one cut out right here. Here you have the Bluetooth switch. Looking at this PCB, you can split the left shift, steps a regular caps lock with indicator. So you can see the indicator LEDs right there. Otherwise, no per key RGB. You can split the backspace, ISO enter, right shift is set. Your choice of a bottom row. No physical reset button. But yeah, this PCB is unique because you do have this cutout for the screen module and then you also have this cutout right here. But this shouldn't interfere with the space bar. And then here you can see the pogo pin connector as well the pcb choices you'll have tri mode non-flex cut hot swap pcb which is 1.6 but no per key however if you get the tri mode flex cut hot swap pcb they have two versions they're both 1.2 but one has per key and one does not so if you're someone who likes a per key or gb they have one version with it but it has to be flux cut. So all three are going to be hot swap. However, two flux cuts, one with per key, one with no, and then the non-flux cut that does not have per key. And then the two flux cut ones are gonna be 1.2. The non-flux cut is going to be 1.6. But in terms of the layouts, they all support the winky and winky list cases. They all have 6.25 and 7U and they both have on and ISO. Ginkgo has barked randomly at the ceiling and it freaks me out. She's done that in hotel rooms too. Or like, I'll take her to a hotel with me and like she'll start, like one time she just like started barking randomly at like the wall, like not even the wall to the hallway, but like a random ass hall nowhere, right? And I was like, okay, I'm being haunted. <laughs> All right, there's a ghost in here with us, great. <laughs> great.
So let's talk about it. This is the QK80 MK2. So this is an ice blue. This is the anodized color. It's a F12 TKL. You can get it in both Winky and Winkyless. Here you have this one that says Pod. And this is magnetic, but this is where your connector would go. So it does have this little cover. And then here you have the two little LEDs. So very interesting back piece. Going back to these screens, so you have three built-in modes, right? So you actually have two buttons right here, and these buttons can actually be configured as well. So if you're like, I'm never gonna change this, I want this to be like insert, then you can change it to insert. But as of right now, the right button toggles the LED and then the left button toggles the LCD. For the leaf spring, for the mounting, you can see it's held down by this clear plastic piece, right? And then two screws. There's going to be six of them. These on the left that go this way, but then the middle ones and the right ones will go that way. That's something that I'm not sure if it really affects the sound, but I think it's interesting that they had these go this way versus like incorporating one that split in the middle and went both ways to kind of even out the sound. But instead, they've just made this go onto this side. But that's just something I found interesting but it's the same as the bottom right so you have the leaf springs going to the right and then you have only this side going to the left and then there's not a way to change it so you can't like move it to a different post and have it go the other way and have this one go one way so it's even you can't do that they're set but it does use a leaf spring so how that works is you have this little silicon gasket right right here so orientation does matter so this would be the top this would be the bottom, so where the little nipple is. This nipple goes into the leaf spring hole right here, but there is a hole right there. And then this is also a sleeve. So this part, you see, has a sleeve right here, and this would slide onto the plate. So once you've slid it onto the plate, you would then make sure that the holes align, and this is what it would look like once you put it on. So that basically keeps the gasket in place. So because this does shift the springs, you just want to be sure that once you've put it on, the nipples are through the hole to make sure it's in place, right? Here you can see where the gaskets would then slide on and you can see it's not just one singular shape the edges right where the plate meets have been cut off that makes it so that it has something to grab onto so these don't like easily slide off right for the pink red and butter yellow it's going to be 124 but the anodized is going to be 134 so the case starts at 124 goes up to 134 however that's not including the plate on the pcbs right so i guess total it will start at 199 so 200 dollars so the per key FlexCut hotspot PCB is going to be more expensive. The other two are the same price. Carbon fiber is going to be most expensive. All the other four, same price. And then you can buy optional stuff if you'd like. So my thoughts on this board. This is my first time seeing the LED dot thing. So I'm pretty amused by it. I think QK has done a really good job on leveling up their designs. I feel like with QK, I'm always really impressed with the things that they come out with. It's always a bit different, but like in a good way. I love the idea of this, right? You have a screen and you have this thought thing. And I like that they've actually done away with like all the crazy case choices and weight choices, right? Instead of making the case itself more customizable, they've allowed you to customize these two things, right? so that you can make this like a bit more personal. I think it's probably easier for them to not do like a bunch of different like weights and whatnot. And then I feel like it's intentionally made so that you don't ever want to take the back weight off anyways. But with this, right, the screen already gives you a bunch of different options for you to like go through. But then with the addition of this dot LED matrix, right, it's like you have even more you can do. In a way, you can customize this yourself. In terms of like, keyboard aspect of it. I think it is interesting how they only decided to go with one mounting style. We've seen a lot of ball catch, right? Pretty much everything has been ball catch. But in terms of mounting, surprisingly see one, but it makes sense, right? I'm just, I thought maybe they would do, you know, like a leaf spring and then maybe a top mount, but it seems like they've been going back to just the one mounting style. So it's not a bad thing, but I would say that 
depending on if you end up using foam or not, the board can be like more bouncy or not. I'm curious to know their design choices on why they made both these springs go this way instead of like doing something that was like more even. But it's kind of refreshing because I haven't seen this in a long time, right? So I want to say it felt bad. However, if you're looking for something like stiff, you're not going to find it in this board. I'd say it's still firm, but if you're looking for like that top mount stiff, you're not going to find it. But I'm also surprised that they didn't make this like optional. So they force you into doing this, which I don't think is bad. But I mean, we saw it with the QK65 V2 where they force you to have a screen. So some people were saying like, oh man, like I, I don't want to have a screen, so I'm going to skip on this board. They don't give you that option, which is another interesting thing. Overall, I do like the board a lot, but I would say that it wasn't necessarily like hyping feel and the, the board itself was like impressive to me. It was more so these screens and the software that come with it now. I'd say I'm more impressed with the screens and the software and like the integration into VIA than I am like with the board in general. <laughs> <laughs> but this mounting style is not new and there's only one so it made it actually a lot easier to like build and feature and I think it also is interesting that they made flex cuts on the FR4 but not on the any others right personally for me I would get this keyboard for this alone but that's because I like this kind of stuff I think it's really cool very novelty if the board didn't have this I would say I wouldn't really see a point in getting it because we've had boards with this mounting before. I would be like just another T-Kill. I mean, that sounds a little harsh, but I'd say the biggest selling point for me is not the keyboard and how it feels, but just for this. I think it feels fine. I think it sounds fine, but this part is definitely like the main selling point for me. Also, if you like this kind of design, you know, very Matrix-esque, I wouldn't say I don't like or hate the Matrix aesthetic, but you know, this part doesn't matter like too much for me. It's more so the front that I'm like very impressed by. Yeah, the fact that, you know, a lot of it is built natively into a browser with VIA, you can make this animated, you can have it follow, you can key map these screens, right? You can do different themes, you can put your own image. Like, I like that instead of having a thousand case options and bottom weights and bottom pieces, now they've made it so it's actually infinite when it comes to like personalizing these to your own. And I think it will be interesting to see like how they keep up with this in terms of like, you know, like the program and like updating and basically creating other things so people can like experiment, etc. But this just opens up a bunch of doors you know, to actually personalize it to your own, right? In terms of building, it was very easy. Pogo pins make it super nice. You don't really have to interact with like the cables at all. Something that I could see like some people like messing up is this piece is not connected. It's not built in right here. It's connected with this ribbon cable. So that's like the only thing I could see like some people potentially like breaking. <laughs> it would be safer if it was built into the PCB itself but I'm sure it's a design choice I don't know about or a software thing. But yeah, everything else of the board just uses the pogo pin so you don't have to worry about it. So how you access it is FN enter. So you can see it says theme. And then if you're trying to shift around, you have to press FN, so arrow keys. So under app, you can press enter to select. And then it says flappy bird or custom animation. So flappy bird, enter. So it says get ready, and then it uses the space bar. Pretty smooth. I know it's like a little tiny, but yeah, it's not bad. So you have this mode where it's just the dots, right? You can see it types like that, but then you can swap it to raindrops. You can swap it to your custom screen. You can get it to this where it has the docs mode, but it's like really responsive. So, and then here you can actually change the screen as well. And then you can swap the theme. So you can have this cat. So this cat is sleeping right now, but watch, you can start typing. And then if you look at the hamster, it, it got tired. 
So they have the cat that follows for your typing, but then there's the hamster for your typing speed. You can watch the hamsters running, 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 running. But if you type too fast, it gets tired. And it's like, I can't go on anymore. And then you have this like Eva mode. And if I put on caps, and then you have like the standard like QK mode. So if you're like, oh man, it desynced again. I gotta go back. I gotta manually put in the time and stuff. Oh my God, so annoying. Like I can't see this tiny screen. Uh, check this out. If you go here and then you go to config, date and time, time sync, boom, it's been synced. So now you can see it says it is 328. But yeah, that's the board. Really cool. I think the screen is very impressive. I think that is a big selling point for me personally. But yeah, that's the board. Thank you, QK, for sending it out to me. I had a lot of fun playing with it. I'm gonna like show my mom. <laughs> that's how you know when I think something's cool. It's like, I gotta show my mom. <laughs> so she's probably gonna be like, oh, that's cute. <laughs> that's cool <laughs> but yeah that's the build